Alrighty, yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Mr. DDG94 back with another reaction video today. We're finna react to most who is the most skilled NBA players of all time. Hmm. Off rip, Kobe, KD for sure. Um Michael. Uh Allen Iverson. Kawhi. Tim Duncan. I know a lot of people are gonna be like LeBron, 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 LeBron. It's not even enough for debate, LeBron. All right, y'all got y'all little boy in there, LeBron. All right, cool. Without further ado, man, let's get right into this. Pure skill comes down to what an NBA superstar can do on the basketball court beyond physical dominance. Many will argue that Kyrie Irving is the most skilled oh, player about Kyrie. in the NBA today. My bad. But where does he rank among the all-time players in pure skills? It is time to find out where Kyrie Irving and the NBA's elite fall in the all-time rankings. Tier 1. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Michael Jordan, the greatest player of all time, has a legendary scoring prowess. His ability to score from anywhere on the court, whether driving to the basket with his explosive athleticism or pulling up for his patented mid-range jumper, made him virtually unstoppable and he ranks first all-time in career PPG, 30.1. His footwork Damn. and body control allowed him to navigate through defenses and finish with finesse. Jordan wasn't just a scoring machine, he was also an elite defender. His exceptional lateral quickness, anticipation, and relentless intensity made him a perennial NBA all-defensive team selection. Jordan's ability to lock down opponents, disrupt passing lanes, and generate steals often led to transition opportunities for his team. Across the board, Jordan was the most skilled player ever, and once you add in his elite athleticism, there is a reason he is the GOAT. Kobe Bryant, often compared to Jordan for his similar playing style and competitive mentality, is right there in terms of skill. A five-time NBA champion with the Los Angeles Lakers, Bryant's career averages of 25.0 points 5.2 rebounds, and 4.7 mm, assists per game Ooh. reflect his remarkable skill set. Bryant was a scoring machine known for his versatility and scoring arsenal. His footwork was impeccable, allowing him to create space and get off shots against even the toughest defenders. Whether it was his patented fadeaway jumper, mid-range pull-up, or attacking the rim with his athleticism, Bryant had an answer for every defensive scheme. No doubt, Bryant had no weakness in his game when it came to skills and was the closest player to Michael Jordan in that sense. Tier 2. Allen Iverson, Mal Kyrie Devin. Irving, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. Allen Iverson, known as the answer, revel- I would put Kevin Durant in that Tier 1. I would put Kevin Durant in that Tier 1 with uh, Jordan and uh, Kobe. I would put Kevin Durant up there. That's just me, though. Revolutionized the combo guard position with his lightning quick speed, exceptional ball handling skills, and fearless scoring ability. Despite his diminutive stature at 6'0 and 165 pounds, Iverson helped change the game by how easily he could create a fence. 26.7 PPG. Damn, dog, get the he was fuck better off, off the him. dribble, had a perfect mid range game, and could make threes as needed. Watching Iverson beat defenders off the dribble and finish around the rim or draw fouls time and time again, made him one of the most skilled players ever. Kyrie Irving, with his exceptional dribbling skills and ability to finish around the rim with finesse, has established himself as one of the most skilled point guards in NBA history. Irving is arguably the greatest ball handler ever and has a perfect jumper that he can pull off in traffic. His finishing around the rim makes him one of one because we haven't seen any guard or forward pull off unique finishes as often as Irving does. Add in a 39.3% career three-point percentage, and Irving has no weakness offensively. Steph Curry revolutionized the game with his unprecedented long-range shooting ability, yeah, fundamentally altering how basketball is played. His record-breaking seasons, including the 2015-16 campaign where he shattered the single-season three-point record with 402 made threes, solidify his status as one of the most influential players of his era and the most skilled shooter ever even surpassing Reggie Miller and Ray Allen in that sense. Beyond shooting, Curry has some of the best handles ever and can score with ease due to purely oh skill God. over size. Finally, K 
Kevin Durant, a near seven-foot scoring machine with guard-like skills, has dominated the NBA with his unparalleled scoring ability and versatility. In terms of pure scoring talent, considering he is 6'11 and 240 pounds with long arms, Durant might be the greatest ever in this category. Fact. He can score in every way, over defenders in the post, from 3, 38.7%, and mid-range. At the stripe, he is automatic, 88.4%. There is simply no answer for Durant other than using brute force and physicality to throw him off. Tier 3, Hakeem Olajuwon, Larry Bird, oh, forgot Isaiah about Thomas, Jerry West, James Harden, Chris Paul, Hakeem Olajuwon, the dream revolutionized the center. Elijah one, bitch. Stop saying Elijah one. Maybe not you say his fucking name, bitch. Position with his remarkable combination of size, skill, and athleticism. A two-time NBA champion and finals MVP, Olajuwon's career averages of 21.8 points, 11.1 .1 rebounds, and 3.1 blocks per game highlight his dominance on both ends of the court. His signature dream shake move and his ability to defend the rim with precision. But if you're gonna put Hakeem in here, you gotta put Tim Duncan in here too. They 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 are are I I'll go as far as to say they both got the same skill set. Like just like Kobe and Jordan, Tim Duncan and Hakeem Olajuwon got the same skill set, bro. They should be in the same tier. Make him one of the greatest big men in NBA history when it comes to pure skill. The fact a big man can even make a tier among the elite shows how great the Nigerian superstar was. Larry Bird, a legendary forward for the Boston Celtics, was known for his exceptional shooting touch, 37.6% three-point FG, basketball IQ, and fierce competitiveness. Bird would have probably been mentioned near Steph Curry in terms of pure shooting if he played today. Facts. And he had a perfect way to distribute the ball and rebound as well. He, Bird had great size at 6'8", but his- Larry Bird would be the second most disrespectful light-skinned nigga I ever know. <laughs> and I only say he light-skinned because that's what all the players in his era said. They said, Larry ain't white, that nigga light-skinned. <laughs> Talk shit and he talk shit and get buckets just like the rest of us. Shit, he, he one of the fellas. He just can't say the N word. That's about it. <laughs> but they did say that nigga was light skinned though. <laughs> His skill level was simply on another level. Isaiah Thomas, a dynamic point guard for the Isaiah Thomas, get it right, man. The disrespect. This is why I hate these AI generated uh narrations, bro. I hate this is lazy, bro. This is so fucking lazy, bro. I hate these type of videos. The Detroit Pistons was renowned for his leadership, toughness, and clutch play. A two-time NBA champion and finals MVP, Thomas got it done on both ends of the court by combining quick handles, shooting, and playmaking along with defensive IQ. Thomas was a pure point guard in terms of skills, and it worked because he won back-to-back -back titles in Michael Jordan's era. Mm. An often forgotten star in the NBA's logo, Our Jerry West Jerry was West. a dynamic guard for the Los Angeles Lakers, known for his scoring prowess, 27.0 PPG, and tenacity on defense. In terms of skill as a combo guard, West is easily in tier three because he had no weakness as a player. He could shoot at the highest level, pass the ball perfectly, read passing lanes, and shut down players defensively. Despite the criticism of his defensive game, James Harden, a prolific scorer, career 24.3 PPG, and playmaker, 7.1 APG, has left an indelible mark on the NBA with his unique offensive skill set. His run with the Houston Rockets was almost unprecedented, as he demanded double and triple teams because of how great he was at beating defenders off the dribble. Armed with some of the best handles ever, and an elite offensive arsenal including step-back jumpers and finishes around the rim, Harden has to be in Tier 3. Despite never winning an NBA championship, Chris Paul is still widely regarded as one of the great- Cut that bitch off! Next caller! Greatest point guards of all time. Fuck known no. For his court Fuck no. This is the most overrated point guard to ever fucking exist. Stop the cat, bro. 
Stop the cap, bro. This is the most overrated point guard to ever fucking exist, bro. Hell no, nah, bro. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Hear me and hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. The fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. In Jesus' name, fuck this nigga. Vision, leadership, and defensive prowess. A 12-time All-Star and 5-time Assists leader, Paul literally has no weakness on the court. Add in 9 All-Defensive Team selections, and we are looking at a first ballot Hall of Famer and a pure point guard in every sense of the word. This nigga got hella weaknesses. This nigga can't finish a season for shit. When you need him most, he stay injured. He can't... Bro, the fact that this nigga... This nigga... Ah, uh, nah, bro. This, nah, bro. Nah, we not finna get this nigga praise. This is the most overrated point guard to ever fucking exist. Paul checks all the boxes because his size is the only negative aspect of him as a player, which has nothing to do with skill. Tier 4. LeBron James, Steve Nash, Luka Doncic, Magic Johnson, Oscar Robertson, Tracy McGrady, Pete Maravich. Often regarded as the greatest basketball player of all time. Next to Michael Jordan, LeBron James has dominated the NBA with his unparalleled combination of size, athleticism, and skill for two decades. The King could probably climb a tier, but James is a physical specimen, and a ton of what he does on the court involves his incredible size, even if his basketball IQ might rank at the very top. His handles and natural shooting rank slightly below the players ahead of him, but he has raw skill when it comes to passing, finishing inside nearly every time, and rebounding. James's career averages of 27.1 points, 7.5 rebounds, and 7.4 assists per game come down to skill as much as physicality. Steve Nash, a two-time MVP and one of the greatest point guards in NBA history, was known for his exceptional passing ability, shooting touch, and leadership. Nash's career averages of 14.3 points and 8.5 assists per game reflect his ability to orchestrate an offense and elevate his teammates' play. The five-time assist champion is also one of the greatest pure point guards ever because he had perfect handles, a perfect jumper, and every pass in his arsenal. Despite being early in his career, Luka Doncic is as skilled as they come, a walking triple-double threat and the second coming of Larry Bird in terms of all-around skill. The Slovenian has to be mentioned. I don't know about that, Chief. We got to slow down there now. I don't know. The disrespect to Larry Bird. That's, that's, a, that's a disrespectful way to, to honor Larry Bird. I, I, I would say right now, Luca is a peak, is a prime, uh, at, at best right now, is a prime, uh, 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 I would say he's a prime. I would say he's like a prime uh, Paul Pierce right now, at best. Very slow, very methodical, but gets buckets. Mentioned in tier five because his talent is simply a joy to watch. He has efficient handles, an excellent post game, and the ability to shoot over defenders with a high arcing shot. A triple double machine, Doncic continues to add to his elite skill level every year. Magic Johnson, a revolutionary point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers, redefined the position with his size, mm. skill, and basketball IQ. A five-time NBA champion and three-time MVP, Johnson's career averages of 19.5 points, 11.2 assists, and 7.2 rebounds per game highlight his versatility and impact on the game. Johnson relied a ton on his incredible size to dominate the game, but he was arguably the most skilled passer ever. We can't ignore Oscar Robertson. The Big O was a trailblazing guard who dominated the NBA with his scoring, rebounding, and playmaking ability. A one-time NBA champion and MVP, Robertson's career averages of 25.7 points, 7.5 rebounds, and 9.5 assists per game highlight his triple-double prowess. Robertson did not have a weakness, as he could finish inside, break ankles with dribbles, and also crash the boards. Tracy McGrady's prime was cut short due to injuries,
but that doesn't take away from the pure skill that he showed That's with my the Orlando nigga Magic, right there, dog. two scoring titles, and Houston Rockets. This my nigga right here. This nigga Iverson and uh and Shaq was my favorites, bro. Then it went from then it I I had to add uh Dwayne Wade to the list. So I had to add Dwayne Wade to the list because uh, it was looking promising for Dwayne Wade. Then Tracy McGrady started getting injured, so I threw him out. <laughs> I threw him out, put Carmelo in. And then after that, it was um, it was Iverson, Dwayne Wade, Shaq fell off, so I threw him out too. And then it was just Iverson, Melo, and Dwayne Wade for a hot minute. Up until, I want to say, 2010, 2011. That's when my list changed dramatically, bro. Um, Iverson was pretty much gone by that point, so I was I was just stuck with Melo and uh, D Wade. Um, Shaq was washed. Trace McGrady was pretty much a shell of himself at this point. So then it went from that to uh, Melo, D Wade, and um, KD. I started fucking with KD Heavy around like 2010. Then I want to say the following year, I took D Wade out and put uh, Russell Westbrook in his place. So it was Melo, D Wade, and it was Melo, KD, and Russ. It didn't change. Until about like 2015. <laughs> then 2015, I kicked Melo out for Kawhi. And then I started adding to the list. I didn't I didn't kick nobody out the list. I started adding to the list. Because I had I had KD, I had Russ, I had Kawhi. Then Giannis started to develop. So then Giannis became my fourth. Kyrie finally decided to leave LeBron in Cleveland and start doing his own thing. So he became my fifth. And it's been up or down. Like my fifth has been wish washy. I ain't gonna lie to you. My my fifth has been wish washy. At one point, Clay Thompson was in my top five. At one point, Jimmy Butler was in my top five. At one point, Demarcus Cousins was in my top five. Uh, it has changed dramatically over time. But I I, I must say, uh, right now Kyrie or, Kyrie got his spot back, and it hasn't changed since for a minute now. My Kyrie spot hasn't changed for a minute now. So my top five right now would be Giannis number one. I'm going to put Kawhi back at number two. Because we don't know what really happened with Team USA. I thought he quit, but it turns out there's some shenanigans going on. So I, I don't, I can't put it past it because Nike is dirty behind the scenes. So I can't put it past it. If Nike has something to do with Kawhi not being on that team. Um... Then it's uh, KD. Russ has moved down to my four, sadly. And uh, Kyrie has been in my five for a minute now. So that's how, that's, how my, that's how my top five rocking right now. An elite scorer, passer, and rebounder for his position, T-Mac had no weakness and was compared to Kobe Bryant at one point in his career. The late and great Pete Maravich would have been something else if his life hadn't been cut short by tragedy. Facts. Maravich had everything as a ball handler and shooter, and his pure skill revolutionized the 1970s when professional basketball was slowly becoming more popular and needed a savior to take it to another level. No, crazy Add in facts. the fact he was the leading scorer in the 1976-77 season, and we have a bundle of skill in a 6-5 frame. Tier 5. Kawhi Leonard. Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, Kevin. I'm about to cut this video off. The disrespect. Garnett, Nikola Jokic, Dirk Nowitzki, John Stockton, George Jervin, Tim Duncan, Paul George, Damian Lillard. Kawhi Leonard has a ton of physical advantages, including having an extremely powerful upper body and massive hands, but his skill on both ends of the court Damn. can't be denied. 
a two-time champion and finals MVP, boy, Leonard JJ is another Redick player Stumbly. without a weakness, and only constant injuries have detailed his legacy slightly. Armed with an elite jumper, 39.1% 3PTFG, an excellent post-game, and a mid-range game, Leonard can take over games as he pleases. It might be tempting to throw a player like Jason Tatum in, but Carmelo Anthony is one of the most skilled- Don't you ever disrespect Carmelo Anthony with that bitch-ass light-skinned nigga. Don't ever disrespect Carmelo Anthony with that bitch-ass light-skinned nigga ever again, bro. Don't y'all ever disrespect that man like that. Carmelo Anthony, I'll take Carmelo Anthony over Jason Tatum any day of the week. Fuck Jason Tatum. <laughs> Fuck the Celtics. Matter of fact, in Jesus' name, Fuck this nigga! ...players ever and takes the edge. With an unstoppable low post and mid-range game paired with efficient handles and jab steps, Anthony made defenders quiver in their boots when he had the ball and was a 10-time All-Star for a reason. Dwayne Wade was never a great shooter with a career average of 29.3% from three, but slashing is a skill that can't be taught. Wade is one of the greatest mm. finishers in NBA history, and he also possessed elite defensive skills, such as being the greatest shot-blocking guard ever. His resume Damn. speaks for himself as well, as a three-time NBA champion and 13-time All-Star. Kevin Garnett is a player you have to think about a little bit to truly respect as a skilled big man. Besides shooting threes, which wasn't common during his day, Garnett <laughs> could do it all. He had an automatic mid-range and post-game, was an elite passer, and possessed every defensive skill. His averages of 17.8 points, 10.0 rebounds, 3.7 assists, and 1.4 blocks per game back up his all-around skills. Nikola Jokic is a current player who has transcended basketball. I would put Jokic up high, bro. I would put him up there with Hakeem. The disrespect to Nikola Jokic, I would put him up there with Hakeem. Plus, he could do a lot more offensively than Hakeem. Now, I understand Hakeem is the defensive. Defensively, he's not touching Hakeem. But offensively, He, he might he might got he might got Hakeem offensively though because that boy can shoot ball due to his unique skill set and basketball IQ and has quickly established himself as one of the most talented big men in the NBA already an NBA champion and two-time MVP the Serbian is a point center which is MVP. the first of his kind we might never see a big man dominate by being a skilled passer again after all he has a natural ability to play basketball because he makes it look so easy to pass, score, shoot, and rebound. Dirk Nowitzki, a transcendent forward for the Dallas Mavericks, revolutionized. Dirk should be higher too, bruh. Dirk should be higher, bruh. The disrespect. Dirk should be higher. The power forward position with his exceptional shooting ability and offensive versatility. His iconic fadeaway jumper and his ability to lead the Mavericks to an NBA championship in 2011 cement his legacy as one of the most skilled big men of all time. He was seven feet tall, but his shooting, 38.0% 3PTFG, as a big man was his greatest skill along with his ability to finish around the rim with ease. John Stockton did not have the lightning quick crossovers like point guards ahead of him in higher tiers, and he wasn't a natural scorer, but he is the all-time leader in assists, 15,806, and steals, 3,265, which is enough to place him among the 30 most skilled players ever. In terms of being a pure point guard, Stockton was the definition, and the Utah Jazz never missed the playoffs when he was the floor general. George Jervin was Kevin Durant before Kevin Durant. An elite scorer and four-time scoring champion, Jervin dominated the offensive charts every time he played, and had no weakness as an offensive player. Even without a three-point shot in his arsenal, Gervin makes tier five with an average of 25.1 points per game. Tim Duncan, the greatest power forward ever, dominated the league with- He should be up there with Hakeem. Tim Duncan should be up there with Hakeem. I'm, I, I, he's right up there, offensively, defensively, he's right up there his fundamentally sound game and defensive prowess. A five-time NBA champion and three-time finals MVP, Duncan's career averages of 19.0 points, 10.8 rebounds, 
and 2.2 blocks per game highlight his impact on both ends of the court. Even if he benefited from being a big man, Duncan had no weakness as a scorer, rebounder, passer, and winner. Paul George is another skilled star because he combines elite handles, an excellent jumper with a career average of 38.3% from three, and excellent defensive skills such as lateral movement. Armed with the ability to pass and rebound as well, George is one of the best all-around players of his generation because Damn. he has no weakness. Damian Lillard is one of the most skilled point guards ever, although his lack of defensive instincts put him down a notch. The point guard is an elite shooter, 37.1% 3PTFG, has quick dribbles, and has nifty finishes in his arsenal. Lillard is also a capable passer and rebounder for his size, mm. but the main reason he appears in Tier 5 is because of his excellent shooting and scoring ability. Alrighty, man. I don't agree with this, this at all. I think Tim Duncan and Nikola Jokic should be in the same tier as Hakeem. I think KD should be in this top tier with uh, Kobe and uh, Michael. I think he's right up there. He's earned that spot, bro. At this point in his career, he's earned that spot. Now, does he have the winning... Does he have the winning mentality that they both have? Fuck no. But... That's why you have to put Tim Duncan up higher because he has a winning mentality to get it done. Now, with KD, I understand he doesn't have the winning mentality that both of them have, but the skill set is fucking there. And the nigga is seven foot. Jesus Christ. Nigga is seven foot with an automatic midi. You can't do nothing with his midi. Unless you... I want to say, unless you like Brandon Ingram or Giannis guarded him, there's really nothing you could do with his midi, okay? But anywho, uh, that's just gonna about do it for this one, man. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. I'll get back to you till then. Peace out.